In this screencast, I will take a stab at creating a vector license plate in Inkscape version 0.46. I couldn't help myself when I saw this tutorial on PS Hero, drew some inspiration from it, and decided to make my own. Honestly, I don't have a man crush on PS Hero or anything, really. He's just a great illustrator and deserves credit for giving me an idea for another screencast. I'll try not to get into the habit of copying his stuff in Inkscape, but his tutorials are so dang fun to follow. Don't worry if you're not a Photoshop user, I'm not either. Just fire up Inkscape, study his images in sequence. They're worth a thousand words. Once again, thanks PS Hero for the inspiration. Okay, let me take you to the PS Hero site. Um, make sure you navigate over to pshero.com uh, and look for the vanity license plate. Um, here you can follow his, uh, his images. And when you get down to the end, we're going to try to create something very similar to this. Now, I'm not going to copy it one for one. Uh, I'm not going to do everything that he's done here. Uh, we'll just make our own, and we'll make it very simple so that the screencast doesn't, uh, doesn't lag on. Also, uh, before you get started, you may want to grab uh, the font that he used. It can be found from, from uh, fontspace.com. Uh, look for Dave Hansen and then look for the license plate text. That's a free font. Download it and use it if you want to. Um, license plate design, uh, there are many of them, and I know you know that. Uh, one of the things that you can do is uh, actually go to your state, uh, BMV, uh, look at your license plates, kind of get some inspiration. Um, you can cruise over to uh, Indiana's uh, website, and you can kind of see some of the things that we have uh, here. Maybe they'll give you some inspiration for your own license plate. And remember, it's a license plate. You can make it any way that you want to. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is set up my document. We're going to go to File, Document Properties, and I'm going to set my document up for about 600 wide by 350 high. And I'll zoom in on this. There we go. And I think what I'll do is change my color palette. This is the standard Inkscape palette. So I'm going to grab the Ubuntu palette. Very, it's it's kind of like the Tango palette with a few more colors. Uh, it's a very nice palette to use. Okay. And we're going to grab our square tool and we're going to draw a rectangle. And we'll make this 500 wide by 250 high. And we're going to put some radii on it. We'll give this about a 15 pixel radius. And I'll center this on my page. A lot of people don't like drawing with uh, the page border on. It kind of gives me a sense of placement on the canvas. That's why I like to have it. Um, you can flip it off if you don't like to have it. Um, but, you know, everybody's got their own way of drawing. So, Okay, so this is pretty much our uh, stock background. And first thing I'm going to do is change this to uh, the light uh, white that we have here. So we're going to select that, change that to white, and it's hard to see, so the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, create kind of a drop shadow around this. So I'm going to right click on this, and I'm going to duplicate it. We're going to make it all black, and we'll select our fill and stroke dialog, and we'll give this a 1% blur, and we'll send that to the very back. Okay, now we can kind of see it a little bit better. I think that's what we want. Okay, on to the next step. Okay, now the first thing I want to do here is I'm going to take this inside gray and we're going to duplicate it. And I'm going to change the color just so we can see it. Actually, I'll just change it black here. There we go. And we're going to select our node tool. We're going to go to path. I'm sorry, we're going to go to Object. No, I was right. We're going to go to Path, Dynamic Offset. We're going to select that one white uh, 
node that we have here and we're going to pull it down. And we'll bring it in about that far. I think that looks probably pretty good for what we want to do. Okay, now I'm going to take this and duplicate it. First thing I'm going to do before I do that, I'm going to change the color again. We'll make this like a light green. And now we'll duplicate this by right clicking on it. And we'll make the duplicated copy all black. We'll go to our fill and stroke dialog. I'm going to give this a 0.5 blur. And I'm going to change the opacity to 25%. and I'm going to lower that one step. Okay. And we'll select our green shape that we drew and we'll make that white. Okay. Now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to simulate a little embossing around here. I know it's a little hard to see, but from a distance, I want to give the appearance like this uh this object in here is raised from the object back here. Okay, now you can do that with a live path effect. Uh, you can give it an emboss if you want. If you want to go ahead and try that, that's fine. But I'm going to do this kind of old school. And I just want to give kind of a, a subtle hint that it's being raised. And hopefully I've achieved it. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to push this up out of the way a little bit and we're going to create some text. We'll go all capitals and we'll create our license plate text. So we'll come up with something clever like use Linux. We'll select our font. I'll pick the license plate font, and hit apply. Let's see if I got it. No, I didn't. There we go. And I'm going to make this about 100 high. So when we want to turn on our uh, padlock to keep the aspect ratio, I'll type 100 here. And I'll move that into our license plate. And I'm going to give this kind of a license plate blue. There we go. And there's our license plate text. Use Linux. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the kerning just a little bit because there, there's a lot of space in between the L and the I. So I'm going to step in here, get in front of the L by double clicking. I'm going to hold my Alt key down, push the L out just a bit, come on the other side of the L, and force it back. And again, just doing this by eye. Okay, that probably looks pretty good. And let's fix the X in the back. We'll just move it in a couple steps. Okay. All right, that looks a little bit better. Okay, now I'm going to take this. And we'll select uh, our inside rectangle. And we'll go to our Align tool. I'm going to select Last Selected and we're going to put that in the middle. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take this and we're going to duplicate it. I'm going to make that version a, I'll just make it a light green so that we can see it. And I'm going to select the node tool. We'll go to path and we'll do a dynamic offset. Okay. Here we see the one node exposed, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that up just a little bit. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Let's drop it down a step just to see what it looks like. There goes my telephone. Okay, I think that looks probably pretty good. Okay, so let's undo that. And I'm going to make this here. We'll make that white. Actually, we'll make it like a gray. Now I'll go black. Okay, we'll go black here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is 
we're going to put in 25% opacity. Actually, what I want to do before I do that, let me back up a step. Kind of lost my train of thought with the telephone ringing. Okay. Let's pick this, and we're going to make this a light gray. Actually, we'll go white. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I know it's hard to see, but we're going to duplicate this. We're going to make that version all black. Okay. Now I'm going to take that version. Get this thing up so you can see it. I'm going to make this 25%. And I'll make this 0.5. Okay. Now I'm going to take this version on top. We're going to push it back one step. I'm going to take the white version, push it back one step. Okay. I'm going to take this dark version, push it back one step again. Until I expose. There we go. Okay. Now, it's probably a little bit better way of doing this. Let me undo this just a little bit here. Okay, now let me take this dark version, push it back one step. Okay, now to get to the white, I'm sorry, to get to the blue text, what I'm going to do is hold my, I'm on Linux and I'm using GNOME. Uh, Windows users, for example, just hold your Alt key down and select the text in here until you get the blue object exposed. Okay, on GNOME, we have to hold our super key, then Alt key. So I'm going to come in here. Okay, now you know you've got the blue text when you come down here to your status bar and the blue is exposed here. We're going to send this all the way to the front, just like that. Okay, that's what I wanted to do. So, sorry for the hang up there. Um, I, I got a little confused. But basically what I'm trying to do... I'm trying to give the appearance that this text, the blue text, is raised off of the license plate. Again, you can use a live path effect and emboss the text, but that's not really what I'm going for. I want kind of, I'm trying to do this kind of in an old school way. Um, because uh, when you're zoomed out on this thing, let me show you, it isn't really going to matter. Uh, if it's if you can actually see it here basically what I'm trying to do is make just a subtle raise um, you can fix the raise text here by uh, uh, adding a little bit of a shadow so you have lighter text here and uh, a darker like a, an emboss back here uh, but I don't think it's necessary I think um, what I have here kind of gives it what we want to do so uh, I'll I won't dwell on that much any longer, okay? So, we got it. So, I'm going to take this now, and I'll just group it together. And again, I'm going to select uh, the text. I'll select the inside rectangle. And we'll center that up. Make sure it's centered. And it's centered. Okay. So, on with the next part. All right? And... In keeping with a super simple license plate, the first thing or the next thing that I'm going to do is add my state up here. So I'll add some more text. And I'll select my text tool. And I think what I'm going to do on this particular one, I'm going to select, let's see, let's look for this one here. I'm not sure how you pronounce this text. Um, Uhad, uh, Ohad, Auhad. <laughs> I'm not very, very good with pronunciations, but uh, on a standard um, Ubuntu install, we have this text. Uh, you don't need it. Basically, all you're looking for is something kind of semi bold. Uh, Arial would be just fine if you even wanted to use that. So, uh, so this is the text that we're going to choose. 
and I'm going to make this text red. And we're going to center that up where I'm going to select my text, my inside shape. We'll do last selected and find the center. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Indiana. Okay, now I'm going to duplicate this. And we're going to back up using the same text. We'll add our month of registration. I'm going to make this text all black. We'll just push that over just a little bit, about right there. I'm going to make sure that that's still in line with the Indiana text. I'll go ahead and fix that. Now I'm going to duplicate this. Here we'll just add the year. You know, obviously I'm making uh, license plates from the United States, so foreigners, you'll have to uh, do your best to, uh, to draw something similar to where you're from. Push this over just a little bit more. Okay, I think that looks pretty good so far. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put just a little bit of a, a, a location down at the bottom, and I want to add uh, the screencaster's text. So I'm going to take a rectangle, we'll draw on top here, and I want the curves. Uh, removed so I'll hit this icon here to make corner sharp I'll make this red and I have 25 percent transparency so I want to get back on 100 so I'll select that down here in my tap or my status bar and I'm just gonna kinda eye this and we'll draw this over Okay, now in order to get it perfectly centered, we'll select uh, we'll select our red rectangle, uh, the reference rectangle here, last selected, and we'll do our center. Okay, that puts it in the middle. Okay, now what I'm going to do is uh, select this text here, and I'm just going to bump it up by hitting my arrow keys because I want to get it kind of in the center between the text here and the bit down here. Okay, I think that probably looks a little bit better. Okay, the next thing, text. Let's add some text. What I'm going to do is add screencasters, heathenx.org, and we'll select a font. I'm going to try a Deja Vu Sans. We'll go bold. put that right in here. It's a little big. I'm going to hold my control key and bump it down. I'll just kind of fudge this in here and go just a little bit more and I'm just going to skew in the rest of the text here. Okay, we'll make this all white. I'll select our text, our rectangle, and we'll select our align and distribute, last selected, and I'll get that centered up. Okay, I think we're getting close. Again, put whatever design you want on these things. Um, I'm just keeping this simple for the sake of the tutorial. Um, but uh, you guys can do whatever you want. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm only going to add two mounting location, mounting holes. Um, typically, you find them at the bottom, too. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to add them up here at the top. So I'm going to draw a circle. 
We're going to hold the control key down. And we're going to make this just a little bit smaller. I think that looks pretty good. And we're going to give this a stroke. I'm going to add, uh, I think I'll add this gray number three as my stroke. I'll drop that here. Stroke is a little big. We'll try a three. And I'm going to remove the fill on the inside. Okay. Let's zoom in on this and see what we're doing. That might be a little big yet. Let me bump that down to a two. There we go. Okay, now what I'm going to do is add a gradient to this stroke. Okay, I'm going to go to my fill and stroke dialog, add a gradient. And I'll adjust this just a little bit. Okay, and actually, we're going to change the stroke just a little bit more. Let's try a one and a half here. Okay. And we're going to make this, we'll see what a 0.5 for blur will do. We'll go a little bit more, just a one. Still not quite enough. Okay, we'll go with a 2. Okay, and I'm going to back out and see what this thing looks like. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. From a distance, we're going to take this and we'll move it in the center here. Okay, I'm going to take this and duplicate it. And we're going to push another copy over here somewhere. Now what I'm going to do is take this and take this, group them together. We're going to select, leaving that selected, we're going to hold our shift key down, select our inside, and we're going to center that in the middle. Okay, that way uh, both objects here are centered from left to right. And that, I believe, is our license plate tutorial. Now again one thing I want to cover and I don't want to dwell on it um, to get kind of this raised text look um, you can use the method that I used or you can use a live path effect emboss and you can emboss you can try embossing uh, this blue text here. Uh, I tried that in the beginning and I didn't quite like the look um, I had to kind of finagle it a little, little bit to get it the way that I wanted so I thought by doing it the way that I did it um, from a distance I think it looks still okay so that is our license plate tutorial so thank you for watching I'm Heathen X